Hello everybody, how are you doing? I hope you're doing really well. And as you may know, I have been undergone to a surgery and now I have 19 stitches in my head, but luck mind that <laughs> I am recovering really well and I'm so happy to be back, right? In today's class, we're gonna have this recording because uh, I have to rest a little more, so I have to avoid effort, right? So that's why I'm recording this class. And we'll be talking about verbal processes and existential processes, which are very interesting processes when it comes to systemic functional linguistics because they are easy to study and very uh, pleasant to, to study as well. Okay, so let's get started. We have here this famous song, let's listen to it. So, as you can see, uh, there is a verbal process throughout the stanza, right? The verbal process, say. Verbal processes are connected to the pronunciation, to speaking, right? But they are also connected with expressing or indicating, which means that there will be some verbal processes which are not connected with speaking, but are connected with indications or expressing something, such as processes like select, worry, show, okay, express, indicate. So let's uh, try to understand this idea. Verbal processes are processes of saying and are expressed by verbs such as say, tell, ask, reply, and suggest. Verbal process clauses normally have one participant, the sayer, plus, in most cases, a representation of what is said, called saying or verbiage. I'm going to call it verbiage because I like verbiage, okay? So, verbiage is what is said, okay? In addition, many verbal process clauses have a participant which represents the person toward whom the words are directed. So, this person toward whom the words are directed is called addressee or receiver, is the person to whom you say something, right? So, addressee or receiver, I'm going to call it addressee. Verbal processes include all modes of expressing and indicating, even if uh, they need not to be verbal, such as showing, worry, request, or select. Okay, so let's go. Here we have an analysis, okay? The x-ray shows a small lump in Alvin's throat. The x-ray is the sayer. Shows is a verbal process not related to speaking, but to indication, right? So, shows is a verbal process here. A small lump. A small lump. And what is shown, right? So, it's the verbiage. And in Alvin's throat. In Alvin's throat is the location, which is a circumstance, right? In Alvin's throat, it starts with preposition in, so it's a circumstance. The doctor expressed some concern. The doctor is the sayer, the participant. Expressed is the verbal process. And some concern is the verbiage, right? Alvin complained about the discomfort. Alvin is the sayer. Complained, the verbal process. And about the discomfort is the matter. About the discomfort is a circumstance that indicates matter. Right? He mumbled that the ball ruined his appearance. He is the sayer, the participant. Mumbled is the verbal process. And what did he mumble? 
he mumbled that the ball ruined his appearance. So that the ball ruined his appearance is the verbiage, is what is mumbled, what is said. Okay, let's go on. Now I have an exercise to practice because it's really easy. Okay, so let's go. I didn't move. I said, sorry, I didn't say move. I said sit still. So what is I? I is the sayer. Didn't say. Say is the verbal process. So didn't say is the verbal process. Move. Move is what is said. So what is said is called verbiage. I, again, ver uh, I is the sayer, said, verbal process. And sit still is what is said. What is said is called verbiage. So we have here the answers, right? Philosophers of science have literally been explaining that science is about correlating phenomena. So what is the participant here? What is the sayer? Philosophers of science, right, have literally been explaining, right, have been explaining is what? Is the verbal process, right? Have been explaining. And literally is a circumstance, okay, that is in between. That science is about correlating phenomena. That science is about correlating phenomena is what is explained. So it's the verbiage. Okay? Oh, here there's a typo, right? Phenomena. It's phenomena. Once my uncle told me a story. Mm, and now, what do you have here? Have something different here. Let's start with once. What is once? Ons is circumstance, right? My uncle. My uncle, you know. What is my uncle? My uncle is the sayer, right? Told. What is told? Verbal process. And me. What is me here? I'm telling something to somebody else. This me is the addressee or receiver. A story. A story is what is told, so it's the verbiage. Okay, crystal clear. Could you ask Mrs. R to bring a table back? Could you ask? So, could ask, we have here a verbal process. You, you is the person who is going to ask, so is the participant, is the Sayer, right? To bring a table back. To bring a table back is the the question, right? Is what's going to be asked. So it's the verbiage. Right? Very easy. Piece of cake. We discuss the various options, right? We. What is we? We. The sayer. Discussed. What is discussed? Discussed is the verbal process. And the various options is what's been discussed, what, what was discussed, actually, right? So, the various options is the verbiage. Clear? Right. So, these sentences here are slightly different than these sentences here, right? What do you have here? Here in this uh, slide, you have two types of sentences which we know as reported questions and quoted questions, right? And usually when we have quoted questions and reported questions, we have a verbiage which is a little bigger, right? So, first one. Well, I've never seen one. He said, right? So, he is the sayer. Said is the verbal process. Well, I've never seen one. Is the verbiage, right? He told me that the tongue has a little brush at the tip, right? He. He is what? The sayer. Told. Told is the verbal process. Me. What is me? Me is the person who is receiving what the, the other person is telling him or her, right? So, me is the receiver or the addressee. That the tongue has a little brush at the tip. This long sentence is the verbiage. 
is what has been taught. Doesn't it worry you? Asked Tawilopip. <laughs> Tawilopip. Okay. Doesn't it hurry? Doesn't you? Sorry. Doesn't it worry you? Asked Tawilopip. Right. So doesn't it worry you? Is what? Is the verb yet? Is what is being asked. Asked is the verbal process, and Tawilopip is the sayer. Okay. And now, be careful, he warned. Be careful is what? Is the verbiage, right? He is the sayer and warned the verbal process, right? Guys, this, this is what you have to work on verbal processes, right? They are really easy. There is no uh, difficult, there, there are no difficulties in understanding verbal processes, right? Now, let's move to the existential processes. You might, uh, you may know uh, Billy Ocean, probably, right? But this song is a very old song and very interesting as well. A little bit sad, but I like it. And it's good to explain what existential processes are. Because we only have one existential process when it comes to English language, right? Which is the dare to be construction. If it's past, future, or present, it doesn't matter, right? But the dare to be construction is the construction that is the most important when it comes to uh, existential processes. Of course, we can work with existential processes resorting to other kinds of verbs, right? And we're gonna see it today, right? So. I'm not going to play the song because Spotify uh, doesn't have it. <laughs> so, sometimes I wonder by the look in your eyes when I'm standing beside you, there's a fever burning deep inside. Is there another in your memory? Do you think of that someone? When you hear that special melody, I always stop and think of you, of you especially when the words of love song touch the very heart of me. There will be sad songs to make you cry. Love songs often do. They can touch the heart of someone new saying, I love you. Beautiful, isn't it? So, you can see that there are lots of verbal processes. And I'm using a verbal process to say that there are other verbal processes. This is very metalinguistic. So, there is a fever burning deep inside. Is there another in your memory? There will be sad songs, right? So we have here present, present in questions, and a future, right? So the there to be is a verbal process. And what is the semantic meaning of there do you know? Let's think about it, okay? So existential processes. This is the easiest of the lot. It involves existential constructions which are introduced by an empty there in subject position. This is sometimes called expletive there. So, empty there. So, it means that the empty there, there is no semantic meaning. There's no meaning with there in this situation because it's only a grammatical meaning, okay? A grammatical construction, actually. The typical verb that is used is the be verb, the there to be. So every time you see an existential construction, you have an existential process. Simple, right? You cannot use progressive forms with existential processes. There's also only one participant in, existen in existential processes. The ex existence, we call it the participant's existence, existence, the one who exists, right? The existent is simply that which is the one who is existentially, who is existentially, who works existentially, right? So, note, however, that in case such as on the wall is a handprint, we also have an existential process, although there is no empty there anywhere. But you know that this construction can be expanded to on the wall, 
there is a handprint, right? Usually, you can omit the their expletive when the clause, the clause begins with a circumstance. Example, inside every university will be an electronic virtual university, right? So, there's the idea that we can use existential processes uh, without the there, right? That's what this slide is talking about, is working on, okay? Occasionally, a verb other than be is used in existential clauses. For example, there came a sudden knock at the door, right? There remains the question of a compensation. So th the idea that we can use, we can resort to other kinds of constructions using the other to try to avoid the be verb, right? So there came, there remains the question of compensation. This is not very common, right? It's, it's formal, very formal actually, and not common. Existential processes examples. Once upon a time, there were three bears. There has been a huge explosion and fire at a warehouse in the south. There is a growing tendency to bar access to computers. So you know what verb, what uh, existential processes are, right? We use it every day. Now, let's try rewriting the following sentences without the there to be structure. So let's not use the be, okay? Let's try to make amends. Let's try to do something different. There's a fly in my soup, right? How can I say there's a fly in my soup with the same meaning, with the same meaning without using the there to be. Let's think about it. There are some possibilities, right? But let's use a fly is in my soup. The meaning remains the same and I'm not using the there to be, okay? Because I'm saying that a fly exists in my soup, okay? There are 16 candles on my birthday cake. And the second option, how can I uh, uh, omit the there to be and keep the meaning, right? Sixteen candles are on my birthday cake. So I'm using the be, but in inverting it, okay, as simple presents. There were five dogs howling at the moon. And now, how can I say? Uh, how can I use an existential process in, in order to avoid the there to be construction? I can say five dogs were howling at the moon. Okay. There's a broken pencil at the pencil sharpener. So how can I use it? How can I uh, use another construction to replace the, there's, the there to be construction in this sentence? I can say a broken pencil is in the pencil sharpener, right? So I'm using the verb to be, right? A fly is, 16 candles are, five dogs were, a broken pencil is. That's an option to replace the there to be construction, okay? Could you understand why the particle there is an expletive word? Because there is no semantic meaning, there is only a grammatical meaning indicating that it's going to introduce something that exists, okay? So keep it in mind because many teachers, English teachers, doesn't know, doesn't, doesn't, have, doesn't have this idea. They just reproduce what is taught, right? And now you know that, you know it, okay? So this was very simple, very easy to understand, okay? And for the next asynchronous class, read the slide and do the exercise available on AVA. Okay, guys, this class, this, uh, class is very short because it's really uh, easy to understand what uh, verbal processes and existential process, uh, processes are. Okay, if you have any questions, you can ask me on the forum. Okay, and please do the exercise. Okay, thank you. See you. Bye bye.